back again to Obsession Engineering for another bit of the R1 jigsaw puzzle. In these boxes is all the bodywork for my R1 and a few fairy glasses in the headlights and bits. So what I'm going to do next is have a go at fitting everything and see how much is missing. This seat unit and the nose cone are brand new old stock from Yamaha. Technically this is a 1999 seat unit, not a 1998, because the one has a slight carbon effect to it in the sticker. But Andy, being the slight Yamaha nerd that he can be, has even got the correct stickers for me. I may not actually bother fitting them, but I have at least got them. So I think I'm going to tidy up under the under tray a little bit, fit the seat unit first, and make sure we've got the fasteners for this bit, because if we have, this can probably actually stay on. Before I actually fit the seat unit, I thought I'd give everything around here a nice bit of a clean up, a bit of a spray with silicon, make it look shiny. And then I realised that some of the wiring up at the back here for the indicators, it's probably had an alarm in it at some point and doesn't look particularly brilliant. I don't really like chocolate blocks. So what I'm going to do, a bit like I did with the uh, alternator wiring, is cut these back, add a tiny little length of wiring in so the wire stays the same length, and then I'm going to heat shrink over them so they're nice and solid. So that's everything now connected and looking a little neater. I've made sure all the lights and everything actually work, which is always going to be useful. So now, I think I can put my seat unit on. To go with all the bodywork, I have a selection of brand new fasteners and rivets and clips and stuff, and a few of the older fasteners. Some of them I've had replated, although I will admit they've not come out quite as shiny as I would have liked. Then you have the slight game of little bags of rivets and screws and bits, which could probably go in more than one place. So, I want to put them in the right place. I'm using a combination of uh, a parts for each website. I'm actually using Fowler's website because it has loads and loads of bikes on it. And I've got a copy of the original Yamaha service manual, which you can generally find somewhere on the internet. So, between all of these sources, I know, for example, that these little rivets hold the bottom of the seat unit into the under tray, and I know these are the correct bolts for the side of the seat unit. So I can go through it bit by bit and try and attach everything correctly. The seat unit is a little bit snug over the subframe, but with a little gentle persuasion it goes on. Then it's just a case of getting the right bolts in the right places. Now that I've got the seat unit on, I have a choice of either a pillion seat, which admittedly needs a clean, or the original sort of OEM seat cowl. I'm going to go with the seat cowl because pillions tend to ruin how a bike rides. And at the moment I've got a Harris hanger hanging the exhaust pipe on, so I'm not actually putting the pillion pegs, so I'm going to fit that because I think it'll look better. As exciting as fitting fairing panels might be, while I was doing them the posty turned up and my brake caliper seals have turned up from Powerhouse, so I'm actually going to do these instead so that I can put brakes on the bike, which I find generally quite useful. You might be wondering, what's the problem with the brake calipers? Well, if we have a look in here, you can actually see bits of the sort of outer seal, the dust seal, actually hanging out, sticking out past the uh, piston. And obviously, that's going to stop the piston moving as it should do, because it's going to drag on the seal all the time. So if they're knackered, the oil seals behind them probably aren't far behind. So we're going to take them all out and replace them with new seals. To do that, I'm going to take the brake line off here, split it off so the caliper is free, and then I tend to put the air line on it and gently, gently, a little bit of air at a time until the pistons move. And then what I tend to also do is put a cable tie around three of the pistons, pop one out at a time, replace the seals, put a bit of red rubber grease on everything, slide the piston back in, cable tie that one, move on to the next one, move around the caliper until they're all done. I've previously done a whole video on cleaning brake calipers, so if you've got insomnia, it's an excellent cure. So I've got the first piston out and it came out really nice and easily, it wasn't seized up at all. But you can see from the dust seal how bad that was worn. So that's why that was sticking out past the piston. The piston itself, I've just given it a real quick wipe over with some scotch bright, and other than a little bit of pitting from sort of general wear and tear, it's in really quite good condition. So that's not a problem, that will work perfectly well. I've moved on to the uh, piston as well, onto the caliper even, and... I've just checked in the grooves down here that there's no corrosion. Now these Yamaha calipers do tend to be quite good for not corroding and that's partly because 
they machine the calipers and then they anodize them, whereas some other manufacturers, Tokikos on Kawasaki's and Suzuki's, are really prone for uh, corroding because they anodize the pistons and then machine the grooves. So any, any dirt or damp that gets in them, it then just eats into the aluminium really quickly. So these are actually quite a good quality caliper to begin with. So what we're going to do is pop the new seals into the grooves in the caliper and then a little bit of red rubber grease on everything to sort of protect it. Slide the piston back in, cable tie that one in place, pop the next one out and one by one we'll have a new set of seals. So that is the first caliper done, the old seals and a load of dirt and bits over there. The pistons popped in really nicely with a bit of red rubber grease behind them. The rubber grease helps to lubricate the piston that it's moving and it also helps to keep the moisture out of the seals a little bit. So it's not a bad idea to just smear a bit of that on them. So that one's done, just time to do the second one. If I'm honest, cleaning brake calipers is a little bit boring, so speeding up is definitely the way to do it. That's the calipers rebuilt. These blue spot calipers, you can actually buy a special tool to unscrew the spots so that they come out and you can pull the pistons this way. But I find the airline method a little bit easier unless the calipers are absolutely sea solid. The next thing to do is to put some new EBC brake pads in and some hell hoses. I've got all these bits from BNC Express. So they can go on so the brakes will be good as new. I suppose we ought to really bolt them to the bike. I have fitted the brake calipers. According to the thing that's written here on the back of this box, there is more to life than increasing its speed, said Mahatma Gandhi. I'm not sure whether this is nonsense or not. Fitting a set of brake lines is relatively straightforward. Connect from the master cylinder to the caliper. What you just want to make sure of is that they're not rubbing on mud guards and fork bottoms and stuff like that. And when the fork's fully extended, the line still wants to be able to move a little bit. Because we're not playing the guitar, we don't want them twanging. One item I have got to tweak a little bit is the fact that the reservoir currently has no bracket to hold it onto the yoke. You can just bolt it straight from one piece to the other, but at the moment this line here is a little bit too long because it's probably actually not off an R1. So I'm just going to do a little bit of jiggery-pokery. I'm actually going to trim this line down a little bit so I can bolt the mass cylinder straight to the yoke. Then we can get that fitted, get some fluid in it and bleed her up. So that is the reservoir fitted. I've just shortened this pipe a little bit and then I've managed to bolt the reservoir on everything's happy. The eagle-eyed amongst you will notice the pivot for the brake lever isn't actually all the way in. This brake lever is actually uh, slightly bent and slightly cracked, so there is one on order, but it will do for bleeding up. So to bleed up, we're going to fill the reservoir with Motor Dot 4 brake fluid. That will then pass down the pipe into the mass cylinder. Now the mass cylinder is really just a pump. So as I pull the lever in, that pushes the pump that way and pushes the fluid and the air that's in the system at the moment down the brake lines, all the way down into the brake caliper. It then goes through a load of little passages in the brake caliper and out through the bleed nipple, which is just behind there. And then when I open the bleed nipple up with the spanner, like that, the pressure that I've pumped from the pump will pump the fluid and the air down this pipe and into an old bottle. You can use a clear pipe, which means it's nice and easy because you can see the bubbles coming out. I tend to do it off feel, so over the years I've stopped using the plastic uh, clear pipe and just use a solid pipe. So there we go. We're going to be using this good quality DOT4 brake fluid. And we'll start by pouring some in the top. Get some good quality Motel brake fluid in there, and then it's just a case of giving it a right good pumping. I will admit this one's taking a little bit of time to bleed up, so we just keep going. Pump the lever to get some pressure in it, hold the lever in, open the bleed nipple, give it a second just to get any air out of it, lock the bleed nipple off, undo the lever and then it pulls bit by bit the fluid out of the reservoir. Sometimes it takes a while, these ones are taking a while, you know it gives you time to think about whether you should buy something daft on eBay or what's going to be for dinner. Meatballs and spaghetti tonight. It's important things. I can tell we're getting close now. I've been pumping it for a while and it's beginning to get stiff in my hand. A little bit more pumping and we'll have full satisfaction. What's six inches long 
and nice and stiff after a load of pumping. A front brake lever! <laughs> One thing to remember with front brake master cylinders is that the smaller the bore, actually more pressure it'll make. So, these are a 14mm bore mass cylinder, which is relatively small, so you get quite a lot of brake pressure, but they can't flow as much fluid, so that you tend to get more brake fade because they can't make as much fluid move, but the fluid they do move, they can move at a higher pressure. So, this idea that sometimes I'm going to put a bigger mass cylinder on it to make it stop better, isn't actually going to work. A bigger mass cylinder, you might get less brake fade, but you won't actually get more power from it. So smaller cylinder, more power. Thank you for watching and join me again next time for some more braking action on the R1.